street sucks. Seriously, look at all this garbage. They expect you to remember all these empires and trade routes and people and places and belief systems and wars and dates. Year after year, AP World History is one of the toughest courses on the planet. So how are you supposed to remember all this crap? Simple. Scientists study this kind of stuff, and Heimler even made a whole video on it that I'll link below in the comments. Seriously, you should watch it. It's super simple, it's not long and boring like mine are, and it'll change the way you learn. But strangely, it's very simple. You have to do one thing, right? stuff down. If you just hang out in class on your phone, you're gonna have a bad time. If you kind of stare around with your AirPods in, pretending like you know what's happening in class, you're gonna have a bad time. Even if you are paying attention, but you don't write down what you see or what's going on in class, you're gonna have a bad time. So brain scientists and Heimler claim to have the answer. To truly learn something, write stuff down, in your own words. But what scientists don't tell you, what are you supposed to actually write on? Today's illustrative example is paper. What up? I'm Ben Freeman from Freemanpedia.com, where I try to decipher AP world history modern to people like you all over the world. Today's illustrative example shows up twice in Unit 2. First in 2.1, where the College War focuses on the use of paper money along the Silk Roads, and then the paper making process itself is featured in 2.5 as a technology that diffused along the networks of exchange. But it's way too early for me to randomly throw words like Cylon and the Battle of Talus and Zhao Z at you. Let's get some context. You can't just randomly walk up to someone and talk to them about the economic and cultural shift required to convince people to switch from exchanging precious minerals, crops, and or crafts for some dried out wood pulp. Oh, I spent months and months working in the fields or crafting some metal thing on an anvil thing to create these products and you're giving me flat tree bark crust in return? No, you're gonna have to back it up a bit. Set the scene for this economic shift. This gets glanced over in world history courses, but this is a transformational shift in the history of the planet. So you can't be like, anyways, human knowledge, trade, and even history itself will never be the same. It's just no big deal. Set up this story with some background. You gotta put paper making and paper money into some global historical context. I'll say this again, about 60% of people don't get this point on the DBQ and the LEQ. So please, 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 whatever you're arguing in your DBQ and your LEQ, start off with a little background to connect whatever it is you're talking about into the greater historical context. Zoom out, what's going on in world history? Even in this specific period of world history, what's going on that led up to this or laid the foundation for this to happen? That's all context is. It's the Star Wars crawl. You've seen Star Wars, right? What? You've not, you haven't seen Star Wars. Fine, to get some context on what Star Wars is, get a free trial subscription of Disney Plus. Let's see, if you watch all 12 movies and about half a dozen shows, that adds roughly up to about 135 hours of content. So get to it and I'll wait here. Right, amazing. Anyway, that was the Star Wars crawl. This eases you into the story while reminding you what's going on in the overall context of the Star Wars universe. And then sends you off to the movie you're watching. You need to do this in your essays. Hook the reader by describing the broader historical context relevant to the topic of the question. Okay, one minute on the clock. Context is crucial, but it should be brief. You don't want to be that guy no one talks to because you basically speak in long meandering diatribes about historical minutia, then make people just slowly back out of the room. Set up the argument, give background, and do it in under a minute. How hard can that be? It's just paper. AP World History Modern kicks off all the way back in the year 1200, and I've mentioned this before, but this is a historical trough. It's not a magic moment of history starting or anything. It's just 1200. It's a nice little spot where there's not much going on, but a lot of things are coming up soon. And I have less than a minute for context here, so I think it might be helpful to go back 1100 years to the year 105 CE. This is my man, Cylon. See what he's doing there? He's making paper. Cy was a eunuch, and we don't have time in this minute to break that down, but basically they were men who were castrated. Zheng He, the great Chinese navigator, I don't know if you've gotten to Zheng He yet in your course, is the only other one I can think of in AP World History that you need to know. It allows you to have close access to the court without the ruler having to worry about you. And by definition, you won't have any heirs. 
Anyways, Sai was a court messenger to the Han Dynasty. Think of the Han Dynasty as the rough Chinese equivalent to the Roman Empire in Europe. Don't worry, it's not on the exam. Later, he became an instrument and weapons maker for the emperor himself. Sai solved a centuries old problem. If you wanted to keep written records, you had to write it on bamboo or these wooden slips. These were often bulky and hard to store. You could use cloth, you could use silk, but these were too expensive for everyday use and generally didn't last as long. Legend has it, Sai may have been inspired by watching paper wasps build their nests. Hey, wasps, look at you. Normally you're the worst, like the worst, but you've inspired paper, so you know, there's one good thing that you did. Thanks wasps. Anyways, he mixed some mulberry fibers, some old rags, fishnets, and hemp, and paper was made. Here's an account from the fifth century history of the later Han Dynasty. In ancient writings and descriptions were generally made on tablets of bamboo or on pieces of silk called qi. But silk being costly and bamboo heavy, they were not convenient to use. Sai Lun then initiated the idea of making paper from the bark of trees, hemp, old rags, and fishing nets. He submitted the process to the emperor in the first year of Zhuangzing and received praise for his ability. From this time, paper has been in use everywhere and is universally called the paper of Lord Tsai. You know why we have this imperial history? They wrote it down on paper. So you can't keep a good idea down. The spread of paper making and later the use of paper money all spread along the networks of exchange from Unit 2 until they both became commonplace worldwide. No, didn't get it. Maybe a thousand years before is a bit too far to go back on context, whatever. Let me write this down. Note to self, keep your context close to or even within the time period of the prompt instead of 1,000 years before. Got it. Sorry. Anyways, keep it short and make sure you explore the greater historical context of the topic. And don't forget to be sure to tie your contextualizing back to the topic you're writing about. In my case, the invention and spread of paper. Enough context, let's get to the example. Cylon made paper like 2,000 years ago, so this should be pretty simple here. All right, so tree bark, check, some old hemp, uh, some rags, an old fishing net, and just edit this so it makes it look like I made paper. I mean, this is too hard. And there it is, paper. Okay, you don't actually have to know how to make paper, but you do need to know the role paper played in the networks of exchange from Unit 2. So let's look at it from the two ways the College Board uses paper in Unit 2. First, paper making. So you got the idea of where paper came from back in the context. And it's a vast upgrade from papyrus or writing on cloth scrolls. Papyrus and scrolls tend to deteriorate over time. Paper, as you can see from the process that I just went through, Am I doing this right? Is pre-broken down before it is pressed, unlike papyrus or cloth, which is just woven together. Those fibers tend not to stay together over time and fall apart. But what the college board wants you to know about the paper making process actually comes from later in unit two in section 2.5, the cultural consequences of connectivity. So basically, can you name a scientific or technological innovation that moved along the trade routes of Unit 2? Paper is so oddly specific. Not only is it the only of the four great Chinese inventions whose inventor we actually know by name, my boy Ceylon, but we also literally know how it spread to the West. The Battle of Talus predates this course, so I'll be brief, but it was one of the most epic battles in human history. The largest caliphate ever, the Abbasids, fighting Renaissance China, the Tang Dynasty, in the year 750. You don't need to know who won this battle, but the Abbasids won this battle. But for our purposes, you should focus on a few of the Chinese soldiers who were taken hostage after the battle. Turns out they weren't just soldiers. Their side hustle? They were paper makers. The Abbasids took them back to Baghdad and paper making took off from there. So when your teacher was going off about how amazing Darul Islam was in this period and how they had these massive libraries in Cordoba and Baghdad, this wasn't possible without paper making. Chinese libraries had already grown exponentially ever since paper making was invented back in the year 105. And Islamic libraries soon followed. The Chinese took another leap forward with the advent of woodblock printing in China around the year 1000. You should be starting to get this feeling for the first several units in AP World History that China is the one seed in a ton of categories. And this is owed in no small part to paper and printing. Europe won't even begin to start catching up until centuries later with the eventual European introduction of printing via Johann Gutenberg in the 1400s. And since it is a vast improvement, you can easily see how paper would be preferred by literally everyone. And that means if you heard or saw of it on a trade route, you'd be inquiring as to how to get this for yourself. With papyrus and parchment being too expensive and fragile for everyday use, we have literal accounts of viziers and emperors ordering paper making in their empires. Follow this timeline. 
and I made a map. Papermaking was in Pakistan by 550 CE, India by 650 CE, Samarkand by 751, Baghdad by 793, Egypt by 900, the Cordoba Caliphate in Spain by 1085, Morocco by 1100, Syria by 1150, Northwest Persia by 1250, France by 1348, the Netherlands by 1350, Germany by 1390, England by 1490, Russia by 1586, Sweden by 1612, and Samarkand in particular became famous for its high quality papermaking. Why Samarkand? You know why Samarkand. Samarkand is arguably the most influential Silk Road city. So paper and papermaking are spreading all throughout the Afro-Eurasian world in this period. The second way paper shows up in Unit 2, straight cash money, homie. Paper money in the form of banknotes originated, <laughs> I like how there's no transition there. It's just going from making it rain to just back to Chinese banknotes. Anyway, surprise, surprise, China issued the first paper banknotes back in the 600s. Also, use some logic here. They have a centuries long head start on the use of paper in general. So it only stands to reason that the Chinese would take advantage of this head start. Hell, they even had toilet paper centuries before anyone else had paper. Back before paper banknotes, coins often had a hole in the center so they could be strung onto ropes. And so if you were a successful merchant, that's literally a heavy load to bear. So merchants would store their coins with a trusted person and get a banknote, a kind of receipt. Return with the receipt, you get back your coins with a small surcharge. So after the year 1000 CE, a large group of merchants got together in China and standardized banknotes into this, the Zhao Zi, the world's first paper money. The Song Dynasty later nationalized these banknotes into a state-issued paper currency. By the way, you know how your teacher started the year off just like freaking out about the Song Dynasty, like the Song did this, the Song are the greatest, all the way, I think it's 1.1, it's the first section in the course. Well, think about the impact the Song are having in world history so far. Chopper rice, boom, Song Dynasty. Paper money, boom, Song Dynasty. Gunpowder, literal boom, Song Dynasty. The Song seem to have everything going so well for them. What ever happened to them? Hmm. So with all the economic advantages in Song China, their economy was booming, and paper money was a way to make trade for merchants easier and more efficient. That's today's example. Paper making technology spreading all around the world on the networks of exchange, and the new use of paper currency in the Song Dynasty in China. All right, enough paper. Let's talk about the exam. Okay, I've decided to not go back past 2017. That's when the free response section basically took the shape that it is today, roughly. And in 2019, the first SAQ was this one. It's one of these deals where they give you a quote from a secondary source. Old Tommy Allison here was writing this in 2001, but part C down here, the College Board loves this move. Here's what they do. They give you some expert on some historical thing, saying some historical stuff about some historical thing, and they want you to challenge them. So the author here is basically saying that pastoral nomads, like. Mongol type people, were the main initiators of the exchanges between East and West. And the spread of paper making from China predates the major pastoral nomads that he's talking about here. So that could have helped you out there. Paper is just not on the pastoral nomad radar at this point. Same year, 2019, there was an LEQ about how technological innovations led to economic growth in this period. I mean, come on, that's literally what this is. They had an SAQ and an LEQ basically about how paper money was crucial to economic growth. 2020 was the weird COVID year, so nothing to report there. 2021, again, the first LEQ was this one. Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which developments in economic or commercial practices in Afro-Eurasia affected trade in this period. On the literal scoring rubric the College Board releases, their example here says, paper money. Last year, 2022, paper and paper making did not show up. It's not very cash money of you, College Board. But if you've seen enough of these illustrative examples videos, you'll start to notice that they don't all show up that often on the exam. So three times in the past three years, I think this is actually the record. The College Board is telling you not to skip over the networks of exchange and the role of paper and paper money. Is this too long? Did you not watch? Let's go. Writing is crucial for learning, but what do you write on? Paper. In the most awkward contextualization ever, we met Eunuch Sai Lun and his invention, paper. We found something positive about wasps. I successfully made paper. 
too easy. We saw papermaking from its roots in China spread along the networks of exchange to the rest of Afro-Eurasia. I made it rain paper money in my living room because paper money from China is a big deal. Were there examples on past exams? Yes, three of them in the past three years. Okay, thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Ben Freeman from Freemanpedia.com. Hit subscribe to get these as I make them. I'm an actual high school teacher, so these won't post every day or every week, but as often as I can get them written, filmed, edited, uh, I'll post them here for you so you can uh, you know, come back and make fun of me for my stupid jokes. All right, that's it. Good luck on the exam in May, and I'll see you next time.